Uh, my name is Carrie Wilcox, and this is my first place of speech for COM 120. Carrie Hutchins had battled cystic fibrosis since birth, but last year, when the 33 year old mom from Sparta, Michigan, took a turn for the worse, she was moved to the top of the waiting list to receive a double lung transplant. It was her only hope of living long enough to see her kids graduate. Hutchins waited in vain. Her heartbreaking plea, shown on local TV as well as the internet, touched the thousands who saw it and more than tripled the monthly tally of people who usually register as organ donors in the, co in the county. But she died before a match was ever found. Ladies Home Journal published this story in their June 2011 issue. This is just one story. There are hundreds more. Yes, some are tragic, as in this case, but some are very successful. A person who receives a transplanted organ from a donor is given a second chance at life. It is often called the gift of life. It's important for everyone to become an organ donor because one day you might know someone or be that person that needs an organ transplant. In case you did not know what organ donation was, it is when an organ from one person is taken and placed into another person who had that same organ but was no longer effective. There are different types of organ donation several misconceptions about donation, and many ways to become an organ donor. First, I will talk about the different types of organ donations and some facts about organ donations. Then I will tell you about the common misconceptions and myths. Finally, I will inform you about how you can become an organ donator if you are not one yet. There are different types of organ donations. In fact, there are four. These different types are living donor, organ donation after cardiac death, organ donation after brain death, and whole body donation. Living donors can donate their kidneys, liver, or pancreas. When an organ donation occurs after death, the United Network for Organ Sharing, UNOS, matches organs with recipients via the National Organ Procurement and Transplant Network, or OPTN, according to Livestrong.com. Unfortunately, there are certain people who aren't able to donate their organs. WebMD.com states, having a serious condition like cancer, HIV, diabetes, kidney disease, or heart disease can prevent you from donating as a living donor. When body, whole body donation could be as po a possible alternative for these people. Whole body donation occurs when a person wants to donate their body for science. Instead of donating their organs for transplantation, they can, or they can donate their whole body. To help show you a better picture of the need for organ, organ donors, I have a few statistics to share with you. Keep in mind these statistics rem represent human beings. They could be your mother, your father, your sister, your niece, your nephew, or a friend. As of 4.45 p.m. this afternoon, there were 111,741 pe people on the waiting list. 72,304 people are called active waiting list candidates, so, uh, states the Organ Procurement and Transplantation Network. Think about this. Every 11 minutes, another person is added to the list. That means in the time that I've given this speech, one more person has been added. According to organdonor.gov, right now there are more than enough people waiting for an organ to fill a large football field two times over. Each day, about 75 people receive an organ transplant, but sadly, 20 others die in that same day because of a shortage of organ donors. One organ donor can save up to eight lives, states DonateLifeNY.org, and can save or improve the lives of 50 other people with tissue or cornea, don cornea donations. Kidneys, liver, and pancreas are not the only organs that can be donated. Medline Plus states that other internal organs like the heart, the intestines, and lungs can be donated. Skin, bone, bone marrow, and cornea can also be donated. Now that I have given you some facts about organ donation, let's look at the common misconceptions and myths associated with it. There are several different misconceptions and myths associated with organ donation. One common public mis misconception, according to Livestrong.com, is that once a person signs a donor card, they think emergency physicians will give up on them prematurely. This is untrue. 
A person is not determined to be an organ donor until after the physician, who is not part of the transplant team, declares them dead. Age is another misconception among the public. Many think they are either too young or too old to donate. The truth is anyone can be a donor, regardless of age, gender, or race. <clears throat> Doctors will examine your organs and determine whether they are suitable for donation if the situation arises, according to owner, organdonor.gov. Now, I found this poster online that, is an advo that advocates organ donation. It is a picture of a little child holding an adult's hand, and it says, their lives are in your hands. This made me think that organ <clears throat> people, not just adults, but children, need organs donated. And as of March 2011, nearly, nearly 2,000 names on the waiting list were pediatric patients, as stated by DonateLife.org. The last misconception I want to tell you about is that being an organ donor is expensive. Organ donation is typically covered by the other, the recipient's insurance coverage, and there are no upfront costs to the donor. However, organ donation does require that the donor get surgery, which could mean that they get time off work and for the operation and the recovery. <clears throat> Misconceptions are often the reason people do not become organ donors, but it is important to become one, and I will tell you why and how you can become one. Becoming an organ donor is an easy process. There are several ways to do it. You can go online and sign up to, with your state's donor registry. You can declare it on your driver's license. Telling your family members that you are an organ donor is another way. Oftentimes, your family needs to be told because just signing up or having it shown on your driver's license <clears throat> doesn't tell the emergency room physicians that you are an organ donor. Oftentimes, the next of kin is often asked before any documentation is examined. Every year, nearly 12,000 people, according to Livestrong.com, who met organ donation criteria did not become organ donors because their next of kin or family members did not know about it. It's so easy to become an organ donor, you don't need to leave the comfort of your own home. With technology these days, you can sign up online or you can print off the form and send it in the mail. It's an easy process and it can make your life feel fulfilled. In conclusion, organ donation is very important. You never know when you yourself will be the one who needs an organ transplant. There are hundreds of thousands already on the waiting list that anxiously wait for the telephone, ring, telephone to ring, telling them their prayers have been answered. They have an organ for them. There are different types of organ donation, several misconceptions, and myths associated with organ donation, and multiple ways to become a donor. In this speech, I have told you the different ways of organ donation, some of the misconceptions, and how to become an organ donor. We often take our grant our <clears throat> we often take for granted our good health and forget about those who may not have what we have. I will leave you with a quote from Melissa Simon, an organ donor recipient. Just as you're facing the best days of your life, someone else is facing the worst days of theirs. Thank you. Any feedback? Okay, yeah. Very well. My audience feedback. <coughs> Go ahead. Very well done. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I got feedback. Very well done. Thank you. As well. Hi. Um, you, so as, if I'm, as I'm following you this. You can do that, yeah. Okay. Follow that. Um, you start off with a great use of a story, um, and you even backed it up from like a woman's magazine, um, which was you know, a good way to reel us in. That was very well done. Um, your agenda was concise up front. Oh, your agenda was concise up front. You gave us the four types. Um, and you backed up everything throughout the entire speech with um, quotes and facts I heard, like Livestrong.org, um, .gov websites, um, WebMD, throughout the thing, which was good, so I knew like, that you'd done the research. Um, there's effective visuals, like the football field was pretty powerful. The fact that dri during the speech, one more person would want to, um, would be back on the list for uh, um, body parts <laughs> was very well done as well. Um, you started off nervous. It was obvious in the beginning, like you were slower, you used um, and your, your, your um, 
you're, you're, you're going from one section to the next was choppy, but then at one point you clicked with the material and it got personal and you were smooth and it was, it was right on, on track. You remember seeing that? That was really good. Mm -hmm. um, and you started using your body too. You were using the cards and then when you broke off script you'd go like this <coughs> and you'd talk and you would reel, us, reel me in more yeah, because it was more personal. Uh -huh. It was very well done. Um, and I also like to you go think about this and then <laughs> I thought, okay, I have to think about this. So it was a good little cue to make me like because it's easy to start losing attention, and then when you sit there, be like, okay, what am I thinking about? Um, and you really back in and thinking, like, made me think throughout the speech. Um, I have to do more than just on my license to make sure that I'm an organ donor. Um, and then you ended it by recapping the agenda points. You went over it and then gave us another, like, you know, um, pleading for us almost. And then ended it with a good quote. Which is really well done. Okay. I thought it was good. I learned a lot. Um, the eye contact was much improved. I felt like I was at a speech. Um, learned a lot of facts and uh, sources were good. So, very nice. Okay, now how do I stop it?